Hello and welcome to another video at Indies Tech. This is again another unboxing video. In this video I will unbox my new soldering iron. This is a Hako FX951. Then we will do the basic setting configuration and finally we will do some soldering, including SMD and throw hole component soldering. Now let's get started. I've been waiting so long to get a good quality soldering iron. Finally I'm able to get one. So the first thing comes out of the box is this solder calibration key. This blue solder calibration key is very important. Without this, you will not be able to change any settings including the temperature. So make sure you don't lose it. Now the, the next thing, this black pad is basically the hot tip holder. You can change hot tips with this. So this is another important thing. And this yellow circular pad is the hot tip wiper. This handy, but I recommend to get a good quality one. Now the next thing I would like to show is this yellow color adapter. This is used for connecting solder tip with the hand pieces. The power cable came in the box. It's not molded, but I'm okay with it. The soldering handpiece connects the solder tip with the soldering iron, which came as very handy and really useful, good quality. Hacko's delivery policy is not particularly friendly. They charge a lot, but um, I guess what you have to pay for. It, uh, now we can see the solder tip stand, which is really good quality, is strong build and safe to use. Now finally at a glance we can see all the components came with the standard packaging and uh, I think um, this is sufficient except uh, the uh, individual tips you got to buy depending on your uses. Now the soldering tip does not come with standard packaging so you need to buy them individually and they are very expensive so I decided to buy the knockoff version of them. The cheap eBay soldering tip for Hacko FX951 came as very handy, very cheap. It's like um, you can buy 10 of them at the price of one genuine, so which can, which helps and it works. I can guarantee it works. Now let's talk about the temperature setting. As you can see, there are four buttons, up and down, star, and the hash button. So this up and down star and hash button, none of them will work unless until you put the calibration key. This is the calibration key. As soon as I put the calibration key, you can see the first significant number will start flashing. So for now, three will be flashing. And now I can change it with up and down button. Um, I think it goes to a maximum to four. So 400, um, like 500 degrees, maybe the maximum temperature uh, it is able to produce. Then you can change all the other number as well, like 350, so you can go right uh, 5 and 0, but um, I think uh, the third significant number is not that important, unless until you really want to fine-tune your temperature setting, which uh, in my case is not really necessary. And the hash button is for offsetting, temperature offsetting. This is mainly more fine-tuning and calibration, which is not necessary uh, unless until I don't know which project require um, this kind of offsetting. The machine setup itself is very handy. It is not complicated at all and uh, anyone can adjust it. As you can see, I just put uh, the chip inside the, so in, inside the sleeve, the yellow color sleeve and um, instantly it just locked. It will make a clicking noise. Um, if, it, if it doesn't make the clicking noise, that makes that the chip has not gone to the critical point where it's supposed to be and uh, it will produce error. So you make sure you put it uh, firmly more inside and um, make sure it's not on and uh, yes it is not on as you can see um, there is no number is flashing now this is the mistake time i had no idea what i'm doing i had very little experience with soldering um, but uh, that was the actual reason i bought this expensive kit 
just to learn things with a good piece of kit which give me some confidence as you can see i just assemble my um, kit and at the first um, i'm trying to solder a switch uh, which went uh, quite okay not that bad but as soon as i try to desolder it uh, i was struggling uh, with this simple job and uh, given the fact that this is a very good piece of kit but um, it's me the user has uh, no experience um, how to uh, do soldering which is uh, letting me back which is letting the machine down as you can see i am using the bit soldering bit to suck the solder from the board but uh, it's not doing its job because i'm not engaging properly my tip is wrong um, it went horribly wrong in every direction but since then uh, i've been watching lots of youtube videos and i have uh, gained intermediate level of experience with soldering i'm not a pro but i i, I know basic soldering so the next part of the video i will show three different kind of soldering i've done with this heco fx 951 one is the smd soldering and one is the throw hole component soldering and the other one is that just a normal um, wire bonding wire connection these are the soldering tip i have but those three at the right are the most important one um, the yellow grip one the one i'm holding is the screwdriver type one this screwdriver type one is more suitable for throw hole component soldering and the middle one is that hoof one is like a hoof of the horses uh, so this hoof one is uh, best for both world it is good for smd as well as the throw hole component soldering or a large surface mounts soldering are involved this is good for that job but the one at the left is the conical one uh, this fine tip conical one is good for smd component soldering component which i will do next and uh, i will do all three one after one this is the board I'm using today for practicing SMD soldering. I'm using my HECO FX951 with its T12 um, soldering bit, uh, the conical soldering bit, and uh, um, it is really um, useful for this job. Um, just to keep in mind that uh, SMD soldering is very delicate job uh, so um, without microscope it is possible but you need to be extra careful. The first stage of SMB soldering starts for at least for this board is laying solder on the outer pads of the component. As you can see I am laying a bit of solders on every outer pad of the component then I am slowly slowly laying all the components one by one. So I am securing the component at least one side then I am completing my job soldering the other side. It is going for all the rows. The good thing about this board is that it has got um, all these uh, practice bit which has no consequences with the final project but uh, as you can see the left three columns are for practice but this circle is for the uh, genuine 555 timer LED project. The best thing I have found for HECO FX951 is that it is very accessible for the new user. You don't need uh, much uh, experience to get started with this FX951 with its interchangeable soldering tip is like a sushami knife of soldering with one iron you can do all kind of soldering those those tip they helps you can use them for soldering as well as for desoldering but obviously you need to um, change the, the tips based on the job and as I am going through I am picking it up surely but slowly and uh, I think this is the best way um, you, you just got to start at any point and you make sure that you have got the right tools uh, then once you have got the right tools you can do more research and you can slowly build your experience that's what I am doing at the moment and uh, now I will do the throw hole component soldering right and this time I will assemble a very cool Tesla coil project I will be soldering using this board and my screwdriver type soldering tip with HECO FX 951. I will be assembling all the components one by one but the detailed project has already been published. Please check my playlist but in this video the main focus is just to demonstrate throw hole component soldering using HECO FX 951 with T12 tip. I'm not a soldering expert. 
and you have every right to criticize my work but I would really appreciate your constructive criticism with comments for me to improve on in terms of soldering you need to buy many more things except the soldering iron you need to buy good quality solder solder tips cleaner then uh, good solder flux as well as um, tip thinner uh, so these accessories uh, uh, they are more important uh, sometimes uh, uh, even 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 it's, it's more important than the solder iron itself now let's come back to our project so this tesla coil project i have already assembled and uh, i'm just cutting the extra bit of pins uh, things um, things th this is really pretty i would say and as you can see after every soldering you just leave some bit of concave shape that is that is more ideal and make sure you don't do the cold soldering cold soldering is a very bad thing for the circuit uh, there will be no continuity and it will not work at all this solder kit i would say is very um, educationally motivated because uh, it gave you the aptitude to learn more in detail then you can research yourself and uh, that's what i'm gonna do um, i'm going to uh, copy the whole mechanism by my own component and and using a piece of breadboard then assembling them all together and see how it works from there um, i might be able to come up with my own project i'm looking forward to get a tesla coil completely designed by my own own way uh, this is something uh, next I'm going to publish so um, please again um, your uh, constructive criticism is most welcome uh, put it in the comment box but I can but as you can see my uh, Tesla coil is just partially working um, I don't know how uh, because it was advertising that uh, the arc will be much more bigger than what it is you can see now but uh, it is just barely visible uh, this is something next i will be improving on but uh, thank you very much for uh, listening and watching all this um, see you next time